What's happening, you guys? Thank you for tuning in to this quick little video here today. All right, the NHL season is officially over. The Arizona Coyotes have once again done us a solid and won a game right at the end of the season. They did this, if you remember, two years ago when the Canadians were able to slip down into 32nd and then, as we know, won the draft lottery and picked Uri Slavkovsky first overall. Now the Arizona Coyotes are no longer an actual thing that exists. Um, they are going to be moving to Utah, most likely, as we know. And a sad scene last night in Mullet Arena as the fans bid farewell. Feel for the fan base, and it just clearly wasn't going to work once again for this team. And hopefully they keep that logo in that jersey, though, because it is still a thing of beauty. The Space Coyote rocks. I'll give you all that. All right, so if you guys didn't get a chance yet, Shane Gaumont of The Sick Podcast and I recorded a full episode yesterday recapping the Canadians' debuts of Lane Hudson, Logan Mayu, and talking about Jeff Gordon and Kent Hughes' press conference and their plans. Shane had a bold take on Lane Hudson, let me tell you. So you got to go tune into that video if you haven't watched it. It's a full podcast episode, and Shaner, you know, has some great insights and opinions that you'll want to hear from. You're going to want to check that out if you haven't already. So thank you. I didn't even mention this yesterday in our podcast episode. I talked about Martin St. Louis, but I didn't talk about the fact that the Canadians did use the two-year option to extend his current contract, totaling now three seasons that Marty St. Louis will be here for under contract at this point. He had one year left on his deal. They extended him for the other two with the option. So it's good news for the rebuild, as a lot of reporters like Arpin Basu, Eric Engels, are stating that if this rebuild is going to progress and take another step forward, it's important that Marty St. Louis be the guy at, at the helm as the head coach going forward. Clearly, we saw what he did for this team and their young players. And Uri Slavkovsky, if you think about it, all the debate that was happening at the beginning of this season, whether he should be sent down to Laval or not, well, Slav played all 82 games this season with the Canadians, developed, he grew a ton, and I mean a ton, you guys saw it yourselves, 50 points, 20 goals, 30 assists, got himself a $250,000 bonus by notching his 20th goal for the Canadians on that snipe. Well, it wasn't a snipe. It was a shot from Lane Hudson, but you guys saw a peak of the future with Lane Hudson on the point, just walking the line on the point like no other. It's a thing of beauty. I can't wait to see more of this team going forward. It's going to be a lot of fun. That being said, Jeff Gordon actually did have another interesting quote from yesterday's press conference with Kent Hughes. And actually what he said was, this is going to be the hardest part going forward in this rebuild is making sure to keep the Canadians on the steady path down this rebuild so they can become more competitive year in and year out and eventually make the playoffs. Still not expecting them to make it next year, but I think in 2026, those expectations are really going to start to go up. And next season, we expect the Canadians to take a step forward, but Gordon and, and Hughes have said they're not going to sway from their plan. They're not going to force anything to try to make the Canadians immediate Stanley Cup contenders, not going to be signing big free agents right now, most likely. So we're going to see them still go through the process naturally, stick to their plan. And what we're going to talk about next year is this year's draft because it's a big one. If you remember not that long ago, I said that this draft would not make or break the rebuild. That was a stupid thing to say. I can acknowledge that. If you've seen some of the videos on this channel, you know I've been wrong on multiple accounts. I am not a scout, as I continue to say. I am a fan like each and every one of you find wonderful, amazing, awesome people who still tune into this channel, even though I'm not able to jump on as often as I used to. But you guys know my passion, you know my love for the Canadians, and I still get on here when I can. So that all being said, the Canadians are not going to sacrifice short-term gain for long-term pain. They're going to do the opposite. They're going to have a bit more pain through the rebuild here, most likely, and have a success plan in place to have long-term gain be the result. I do kind of wonder what Gorton means by saying that this is the hardest part, probably because the Canadians are still going to go through some tough times next season, and hopefully they can stay healthy, bringing back Kirby Doc, what have you. But I think a lot does depend on this draft. And the reason I say that is because now we know the Canadians are finishing exactly where they finished last year when they selected David Ryan Backer at fifth overall. They have the fifth best lottery odds to win the lottery, which puts them at 8.5% to win the lottery for Macklin Celebrini, who would just love to join his buddies Lane Hudson and Luke Tuck on this Canadians team eventually. I think Luke Tuck will eventually make the jump. We know, though, that Macklin Celebrini and Lane Hudson played together at Boston University, and Macklin Celebrini is being compared to Sidney Crosby right now with 
potentially a bit more upside, which is crazy to think about, especially given that Sidney Crosby just had a 40 goal season at the age of 36. And I had him in my ho Yahoo hockey pool for the first time. That was awesome. You actually helped me win it, by the way, Sid. Thank you. Now the attention for the Canadians and their fans specifically shifts to the draft lottery, which will be in the first week of May. So at least that's what we've been hearing. So that being said, with the Canadians having the exact same odds as last year, the worst that the Canadians can end up picking, which is good news again, thank goodness, is seventh. So there's about a 14% chance that that could happen where the Canadians could drop back down to seventh. We're not wishing that by any stretch at all. But there is a decent chance that the Canadians could still move up. Last year, they stayed, they stood pat and did not, did not move up or down from fifth, which was good. They got the player that they wanted in David Reinbacker. But hopefully this year... With how many forwards are available, I'm not even going to declare. I'm not even going to say they should take a forward this year. I'm, not, I'm just not. I'm just not going to do it. You guys know how it's gone. Whenever I've had a vision of the player or kind of player that I've wanted, and it just hasn't happened the last two drafts, so I'm going to ease into this one with my third draft lottery with you guys going on a live stream when that happens. And I'm not going to. That's not going to. We're not going to know until the draft itself in June. But I just want to go through the draft lottery with you guys first. And I'm just not going to look too far ahead this time. I'm going to be talking about a lot of forwards with Shane Goma going forward. And no pun intended. I think there's a much better chance this year that the Canadians will draft a forward. Kent Hughes has already said that they may draft for need this year. So versus the best overall player, but we don't know. We just don't know at this point, but there are a lot of good forwards available and chances are we could end up with a very good forward who will in fact have a big impact on this rebuild. So scrap what I said a little while ago saying in a video that this draft won't uh, make or break the rebuild because it certainly could help make it, especially if they somehow win the lottery and get Macklin Celebrini. That would really push the rebuild along naturally, not by force. We wouldn't have to sign a free agent, not that soon anyway. It would actually really help us if Macklin Celebrini were, were going to come on board or Demidov, Lindstrom, Iserman, Tage Ginla, you know the players that we're talking about here. I was texting back and forth with Matt, aka Hockey Junkie, today about the lottery odds for the Canadians and who they could end up selecting. And Matt was saying here in my text, he said, when you combine both chances of first and second overall lottery victories, there's a 70% chance that it can happen to the Canadians move up. 17% of them picking first or second. That's the Canadians. Even second would be huge for the Canadians. So I can't agree with them more that it certainly would be because we know the offensive potential of this draft, at least in the top 10. After that, it's a bit of a drop-off, and we've heard Pierre Maguire say that the draft is okay. Macklin Celebrini, though, exceptional. We know that. Demidov, potentially exceptional. Lindstrom, a big, a big size centerman that we could also use. There's a lot of potential here, guys. So that's all I got for you guys. I just want to talk about the lottery odds here and the fact that the Canadians are in the exact same position as last year, except for the fact that a lot of our team, mainly the young guys, mainly Suzuki, Slavkovsky, and Caulfield, took a big step forward this year in addition to us getting good lottery odds. So that is encouraging. A lot of the Habs progress had a lot of the Habs prospects had good seasons this year, including the likes of Jacob Fowler, Philip Mashar, Owen Beck, Florian Jackeye, and David Reinbacker is now in Laval. Luke Tuck is now in Laval. Joshua Watt took a step forward. You get where I'm going. Lane Hudson, Logan Mayu. Like, do I need to keep going? There's a reason to keep yourselves excited going into next year because our prospects will be in Laval. They'll be with their college, university, or junior teams. But some of them are coming up. A lot of them are. In fact, Owen Beck and Mashar specifically. We'll see if they decide to sign um, Jacob Fowler and see what the progress and status is of him but there's no rush on him right now we're trusting sammy and caden to lead the way with us next year most likely see where dobesh is at all right so that's all i got for you guys thanks for tuning in let's look forward to the draft lottery together guys can't wait to talk about the draft once we know where we're picking it's going to be a blast i can't wait thank you all for watching guys tune in to our full episode with shango mall and myself from yesterday appreciate it guys cheers thank you